Hello everyone, uh, welcome to URS. Hope you're, or you all are doing great. And it's been a very long time since URF hosted a session with you all, hasn't it? So uh, today's session is on Japanese language. And today is the first episode. Uh, we have Maisha Hanjum with us, who took courses from Nippon Academy, and we will be guiding us through this whole session. So as I said, today is the first session of our Japanese language series, and we will be having three more of these on 2nd, 4th, and 6th August. So make sure you stay tuned and keep an eye on URF's page. So uh, I'm Norino Saiba, and I'm a host at URF. And with me, I have my co-host, Nuha. Nuha, are you there? Okay, so I think we've lost Nuha. So I'd like to uh, give the floor to Maisha Apu to... Um, hello? I'm sorry for the net connection. Hello? I'm Nashwa Fifnuha. I'm also a host at URF. And in today's session, we have Maisha Anjum Faria with us, who's going to tell us about the Japanese language. And uh, without, any, without any further ado, I want her to tell us more about this thing. Thanks. Um, Maisha, I think you need to go Hello everyone and good evening. I am Maisha Anjum Fariha. I am HEC candidate 2021 and I'm from Chirong Cantonment Public College. I have completed my N5 course of Japanese language from Nippon Academy. So in today's session of Japanese language, I'll be discussing about Japanese language and its three writing system and two writing styles. Besides that, I'll be discussing their cultural activities and how to introduce oneself in Japanese. Okay, so um, before we actually get into the whole thing, I'd like to say something about URF. So URF, as you know, University Research Forum uh, has been hosting a lot of sessions for a very long time, but there has been a big gap, a, a gap of 50 days. So we're back now and we promise we will be hosting many more sessions regularly from now on. So I wanted to mention one more thing that is, uh, this is pretty new to us too, because this is the first time we're hosting a session live on Facebook for you all. So we hope you'll bear with us. And also uh, you can uh, leave any questions or comments you have in the comment section or in the Google form that you've been given. Uh, so that's it. Let's get into the session without further ado. Okay, everyone. So let's start today's session. So at the very beginning of this session, I would like to discuss how to actually call Japan in Japanese. We usually use the term Nihon uh, to introduce Japan in Japanese. And besides that, the Japanese language is called Nihongo. So how should actually one learn Japanese language? First of all, to learn any language, it's necessary to learn vocabularies and then grammar. And then finally, one should practice to hear that language. Eventually, it will help one to learn it. And after that, I would be discussing like which are the important things that are used to learn Japanese. So one can watch anime and besides that, read manga. So that will be really helpful for one to learn Japanese because uh, in Japanese, the casual form is used quite in their day-to-day -day life. But it is seen that in Japan, honor fakes matter a lot. So uh, first of all, one should learn the formal one of Japanese language, and then eventually one should learn uh, the casual one because it will ultimately help them to express themselves more properly. And then how should actually, uh, so actually what's the benefit of one to learn Japanese? First of all, 
Japanese is working as a bridge between Korean and Chinese. If one learns Japanese, it will be easy for one to learn the Korean language as well because the grammatical structure and the sentence pattern is the same. And in case of Chinese language, while learning Japanese, one has to learn the Chinese letters. Uh, so if one learns Japanese, one has to just learn the pronunciation of Chinese. Other than that, uh, he or she will be able to learn Japanese and Chinese letters at the same time. So now I'll be moving on to the introduction of Japanese language. So in Japanese language, basically, uh, there are three writing systems, which is the hiragana, katakana, and kanji. So hiragana and katakana total uh, has 46 letters, and they have the same pronunciation, which are all altogetherly called kana. And besides that, all these three can be used together in a sentence. So Japanese language basically has two writing styles, which is a horizontal writing style, which means from left to right, which is called yokogaki in Japan, Japanese, and the vertical one writing system, which means writing from top to bottom, which is called tategaki in Japanese. So now let's move on to the hiragana. Uh, hiragana uh, is mainly used to write the Japanese native words. Uh, if any word that is from outside Japan, all those are written in katakana. So in hiragana, there are total 46 letters. So let's take a look at the chart. Here we are seeing that there are 46 letters and below each hiragana, there is a Roman alphabet. So there is a trick to learn hiragana easily, which is to remember the sequence A, I, U, E, O. So if one knows the sequence, it will be really easy for one to learn the hiragana. So if I say, for example, uh, the first five letters are A, I, U, E, O, which follows the order A, I, U, E, O. And if I go to the second column, it's Ka, Ki, Ku, K, and Ko. So you are just adding K before that and yeah, you are good to go. And in this similar way, we'll be learning all the hiragana. Total, there are four exceptions in hiragana chart. So I'll be highlighting those. Uh, so in the third row of second column, there's a letter called she. So it's an exceptional one because instead of using SI, we are using SHI. And after that, Moving on to the fourth row and second and third column, we are seeing that there are two letters which are called chi and utsu. So this two are also the exceptional ones. So you need to remember this three more clearly. And lastly, coming to the last letter of hiragana, which is un, it's an exceptional one too. And with this letter, no worries form. Basically, the word, uh, basically it is used at the middle or the end of any word. So coming to hiragana again, Basically, hiragana is used as a grammatical verse in Japanese. So if I give an example, we will see that there's a letter called ha in hiragana. So we usually use that in grammar and we often, uh, it is used to uh, like, often used uh, to indicate the subject and it's often pronounced as wa. And then the pronunciation of kanji is usually written in hiragana. In Japanese language proficiency test, it plays an important role because there's an intersection which consists of hiragana and kanji in which the pronunciation of kanjis have to be identified uh, by seeing the hiragana or the hiragana is given and one has to identify the kanji. So it plays an important role in Japanese language proficiency test. And after that, one more important thing to remember while learning hiragana is to remember the stroke order because if the stroke order is wrong, the letter might seem different and it may be wrong. Okay, so let's move on to katakana. Katakana is also a writing system of Japanese and it's basically used for um, the loan work. Good. Can I wanna say something? Yeah, sure. Thanks for giving me the floor. So as we know, today's session is all about the Japanese language. I consider here too many people who eagerly want to know about the term mentioned a while ago called hiragana. 
uh, no worries we'll get back to you soon i promise very soon uh, with our next live session and about the details of hiragana and till then stay tuned and i hope people who are watching our today's live session will share it to their friend and if you guys have any queries please let us know in the comment section continue okay so let's continue from katakana uh, since you know that uh, hiragana and katakana has 46 letters and the pronunciation is exactly same and the different ones like the four one that the four letters i mentioned in hiragana those are exceptional ones in katakana too so and one need to follow the same order a i u e o to memorize the katakana so if i uh, highlight the katakana in katakana the most difficult word is the stroke if one doesn't do this uh, write the stroke properly then it might be wrong so let me highlight some uh, letters uh, as you are saying in the third row of second column there is a letter called she and in the fourth row of third column you are saying there's a letter called utsu as you see that in the letter she the stroke begins from bottom and then goes up to the top and in the fourth row third column the letter utsu uh, the stroke goes from top to bottom so if the stroke order is wrong uh, the entire letter will be wrong. And then there's one more uh, example too. If we focus on the third row, last column, there's a letter called so, and then on and the last letter of katakana, un, you'll see that in un, the stroke order begins from the bottom and then goes up to the top. And in the third row, last column, in the letter so, the stroke order goes from top to bottom. So it's really necessary to remember the stroke orders while writing katakana so that it uh, so that the word will be correct and it will eventually be helpful to learn japanese besides that as we already said that katakana is used for loan words so whenever you write your name or any country name except japan you have to use katakana and besides that another important role of katakana is it is used sometimes to put emphasis on some words okay so now we are moving to kanji, which is the third writing system of Japanese language. Um, so, so uh, my shapu, before that, uh, could I say something? Yeah, sure. Okay, so I wanted to remind our viewers that um, uh, Japanese language isn't familiar to all of us. So it it is bound to be a little confusing. So uh, as you uh, we know that you might have a lot of questions. So please leave them in the comment section or in the Google form. And we will answer your questions on 6th August, which is our last session. So that's it. My Shapu, you can continue, please. Letter. It's basically a symbol. So kanji is basically from China, but it, it came into uh, Japan around 5th century. Uh, at that time, Japan had no writing system of their own, so they had to adopt kanji to write uh, Japanese. After that, eventually hiragana and katakana evolved, and then uh, these three are used all togetherly. Kanji is really important in Japanese because those are used to write the nouns, adjectives, and verbs. In Japanese, there are altogether only 2,136 kanjis, which are marked as essential kanjis by the Japanese government. And those are called joyu in Japanese. So, in uh, well, kanji is really important because you will see that frequently when you write a sentence or any word in Japanese, it, is, it takes up much space and it takes a lot of time. At that time, one has to use kanji. And in Japanese language, the use of kanji is seen more frequently. So since there are a lot of kanjis to discuss, so it is not possible in this session. So I will share the PDF link of the kanji book in the Discord server of URF. So please take a look there to get proper idea about the kanjis. Besides that, how to learn kanji, I will discuss that in the next session of the Japanese language.
Okay, now now let's focus why kanji is used. Basically, in Japanese writing, there is no space until the books are for the international students. So kanji usually helps to break up a sentence because otherwise it becomes quite difficult to read it and understand the meaning of the sentence. As for beginner level, there are 110 plus kanjis. So one needs to learn those to complete the beginner level. Besides that, there are a lot of homophone words in Japanese, which means that it has the same pronunciation, but the meaning is entirely different. So let me use an example. For example, meishi, which means business girl in Japanese, is all, that also means noun. So that can be differentiated by seeing the kanjis. So kanji is really important. So one should actually learn more than 110 plus kanjis for the beginner level and around like 130 to 40 approximately. Okay, now moving on to the self-introduction part in Japanese. Self-introduction is called jiko shokai in Japanese. And it's really important. In Japanese, you will frequently meet people and they will often say that jika shokai onigaishimasu, which means please introduce yourself. And there are four sentences to remember and those will come really handy and to uh, introduce yourself in Japanese. So let's start with the self-introduction in Japanese. You will say hajime mashite, which means that how do you do or I'm meeting you for the first time. And then you will say your name and to say that in Japanese, you will say watashi wa, then your name, then this. So if I take my name as an example, I will, see, I will say that watashi wa maisha this. Here watashi means I and then wa is a grammar particle and then this to end the sentence. And if you're in an interview, you should say watashi wa, then your name, then tomoshimasu. It seems more politer. Okay, then you have to say whether you are a student or you are a company employee. If you are a student, you can say gakusai desu. Or if you are a company employee, you can say kaisha in this. Here, gakusai means student and kaisha means company employee. Here, you can omit the sentence because since it's indicating you, you don't need to use the subject again and again. And then finally, you can end the discussion by saying which means nice to meet you. Or in a more politer way, you can say like those are your shikonegashimas, which means I'm pleased to meet you. So this is the way how you can introduce yourself in Japanese. The Japanese people are really uh, warm to the foreigners. So even if you say these four sentences, we'll get along them really easily. And basically this sort of introduction is used in their day-to-day -day life and almost every time when you meet any new one. Okay, so finally, we are moving towards the last part of this session, which is the cultural pursuit of Japan. Here you are seeing first one, which is origami, which means the craft of paper folding, which is particularly called origami in Japanese. Basically, uh, in different occasions, Japanese people hold various competitions of origami and it's really popular activity among the Japanese people. So if you can make good crafts with paper, you'll mingle with them very easily. So let me show you one origami. If you're seeing this origami, it's basically a bird. So let me take, show you, uh, let me tell a story behind this. This sort of birds are prepared around like 1000 and they are usually hanged around the garland and then finally they are hanged in the temple. The Japanese people believe that it actually brings good luck to them. So that's one of the story behind one of the origami. So now moving on to Ikebana, basically that's a cultural activity of Japan, which means floral arrangement. It's basically called Kado in Japanese. So Ikebana, though Ikebana seems like a floral decoration to us, but for Japanese people, it has an entirely different purpose. Uh, so for Japanese people, it means uh, tranquility, purity, respect, and harmony for the people of Japan. And 
It is one of the classical Japanese art of refinement. Different Ikebana competitions are held in Bangladesh too. And before the pandemic, it were held, but nowadays probably it isn't. So now moving on to the next slide. We are seeing here the Japanese tea ceremony. Japanese tree ceremony is really popular in Japan. It's basically the ceremonial preparation at the same time presentation of matcha, which is a powdered green tree. For Japanese people, uh, it really for Japanese people it means a lot. From this tea ceremony, they learn uh, about respecting each other and yeah, tranquility. So. And the preparation of this is called tame in Japanese. Uh, you might think that if any of you watch the video of Japanese tea ceremony, uh, you must have realized that it takes a lot of time. Though the Japanese people are really particular to their time, even they are not late for a second or two, but they spend a lot of time in Japanese tea ceremony. But it's part of their culture and we should respect it. So moving on to the fourth culture pursuit of Japan, which is kimono. It's a national dress at the same time, a traditional dress of, of Japan. It's basically a T-shaped wrapped dress uh, with a rectangular body, and it's basically wrapped left over the right. Okay, basically this dress is used in different cultural program. For example, if you attend a Japanese tea ceremony, you'll be seeing that people there are wearing kimono. Uh, so that's all. And then moving on to one of the most important cultural pursuit of Japan, which is called Ojigi in Japanese, and it means bowing. Whenever you go to Japan, you will see that uh, whenever someone greets you, they bow, or whenever you greet someone, you have to bow. For Ojigi, there are some rules. For girls, they have to place their left hand on the top of their right hand and place both the hands above their thighs and then bow. And for the male, they have to place their hands on either side of their thighs and then they have to bow. Basically, Ojiki is of three types, which is the Eshaku, Keire, and Saikeire. Eshaku means bowing at a 15 degree angle, and Kaire means bowing at 30 degree angle, and Saikeire means bowing at 45 degree angle. So basically, Eshaku is used, so, suppose you are wishing someone good morning or good evening, and then you are just bowing at 15 degree angle. And if you're saying to someone, then you must. Um, sorry, due to technical issues, maybe uh, Nusaiva, maybe Maisha is having some problem. Uh, we'll get back to you soon. Till then, um, we should check the comments. Do you have any queries about this Japanese language? Um, let us check the comments. We'll get back to Maisha soon, I think. Extremely sorry for the technical issue.
Okay, so uh, I guess uh, there has been some technical problems. Uh, Nuha, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, so are we checking the comments now? Uh, yes, there are few. Any more comments? So I'm trying to contact with Maisha soon. So you're surely going to continue soon. So uh, there is a question. Egula ki details hai bola hobe. Abushoi egula next session gulo the details hai bola hobe. Next day. Second, which is second, fourth, and sixth August. So please stay tuned. And I hope till then you guys will share this video to help your friends and families about this Japanese language. Uh, if you want to go to Japan for your further studies, it will be more helpful. Okay, we have Maisha here. <laughs> Welcome. So since Maisha Apu is back, we can go on with the rest of the presentation. Okay. I guess my shop is still having some technical issues. Maisha, are you there? Can you hear us? Uh, yes, I can hear you guys. Is all okay? You're going to tell? Okay. Okay, so uh, lastly, I was in the Ojigi part, which is the cultural pursuit of Japan. Basically, it's called Boeing, uh, and, it, and it is a very important cultural activity in Japan. We know that Ojigi is of three types. As we can see in the screen, it's Eshaku, Keirei, and Saikeirei. Basically, there are some rules for Ojigi for female. They have to place their left hand on the top of their right hand and then place it above their thighs and then bow and for men they have to place their hands on either side of their thigh and then bow basically ojiki is of three days 15 degree 30 degree and 45 degree 15 degree is usually used like whenever someone wishes you good morning and then you just bow 15 degree but if you're expressing uh uh, gratitude to someone or saying thank you you might go 30 degree uh Masha, i think your screen is off i think you should turn on your screen uh the presentation uh sorry for the interruption okay so as I was saying that Ojiki is of three types, which is the Eshaku, Keirei, and Sai Keirei. So basically it means that to go at 15 degree, 30 degree, or 45 degrees. So as you are seeing in the pictures, the female is placing her left hand on the top of their right hand and placing both the hands above their thighs and then bowing. And for male, they are placing their hand on either side of their thighs and then bowing. So as I said that, when someone just wishes you good morning, good evening, or something like that, you can just go 15 degree. And if you're saying thanks to someone, you can go 30 degree. And to someone senior, if you are really happy and expressing gratitude, you can go to 45 degree. So it's really important. And when you, whenever you go to Japan as a student or even as a tourist, you'll see that 
the people there are boy and you have to bow and it shows respect to them besides that some of you who have who like watching anime might have noticed that some bow at 180 degree angle so that uh, that is usually done when one makes a grave mistakes and then one has to bow at 180 degree so that's all about the cultural pursuit of japan besides that i'll be talking about two more cultural activities for example uh, suppose you're staying in a building and your new neighbor comes and then you have to greet your neighbor by giving a present it, and then ask for assistance. This is usually done in Japan. And besides that, I'll be talking one more like if you are moving or going somewhere and then you are using an escalator, then you will see that there are usually two lines. In the first line, people go slowly by taking their time and the second line is for the people who have to do something first and then they don't have time, so they just walk on the escalator. So whenever you go to Japan, don't stand in the middle of an escalator, uh, either stand on either side, according to what time you have. So now I'm requesting to play the video of Uji Can the video of Ojigi be played? Uh, we don't have any videos regarding that. Uh, you may continue. Uh, there was a technical issue actually. Okay, so that's all regarding to the session. If you have any question on inquiries okay, related to this, I, I would love to. I would love to ask a question to Maisha. Um, as you mentioned, three terms of writing forms here. If I'm not wrong, it's hiragana, katakana, and kanji. So I would love yes. to know from these terms uh, which you found more difficult to learn. It basically differs person to person, but uh, as a beginner, I would say that kanji is difficult since hiragana and katakana have the same pronunciation. So it's quite easy to learn, but since there are a lot of kanji, so it's hard to learn and also to know the stroke orders of kanjis is really hard to remember. Okay. Um, uh, which from this, which is their formal one and which is their native? Can you please let us know? Okay, the native one is the hiragana, and regarding formal, basically it means in Japanese language you can either speak in a formal way or in a casual way. But to speak uh, in a formal way, you need to get a good idea about the grammars and the vocabularies, which are quite different from the casual one which can be easily seen in anime or in manga. Oh, uh, okay. I would love to learn it. So I'm giving the floor to Nusaiba. Okay, so I guess uh, that's the end of today's session. Uh, this was the first episode and there were some good and bad phases as you could see. Uh, there were some technical issues, but as I think we can open one fact, which is this session was super helpful for us and for you, for everyone. So, and I also wanted to mention, as you know, URF has been doing this free for everyone. So uh, I wanted to say that you should all, uh, if you could please share this uh, live whenever we do the next live sessions on 2nd, 4th, and 6th August, it, that, that would be very helpful for us and for the people you share this live with uh, to increase our reach. And uh, in the comment section, you could also uh, say, express about uh, which countries you'd like to know more about or which universities, or which 
specific fields you could mention that uh, so and we will try our best to arrange sessions on that because uh, we know that uh, uh, due to the covid-19 situation it is very difficult to retrieve information about different about higher studies especially for those of us who want to study abroad uh, that, uh, that is super difficult so you could express your concerns and we could try to arrange more sessions more helpful sessions for you through URF and please uh, keep supporting us uh, like comment and share uh, our lives, our posts, and keep an eye on our page. We will be holding a lot of different sessions, different helpful sessions uh, very soon. Uh, so that's it. Um, that, that's it for today's live. So I'd like to say bye on behalf of my co-host, Nashwanar uh, Afif Nuha, and our uh, guest, Mai Shangju. That's it.